The only people who don't want to disclose the truth are people with something to hide. Have you seen this new breakthroughs on Stan Dunham, Stanley Ann, Obama's mother? Have you read his life story? Uh, I'm familiar with it. I'm not sure I've read the whole life story. Of the, of the grandfather, you mean? Yeah, the grand big Stan, or were they called Gramps? Yeah, I, right. I know his. I know the biography. I, I don't. I didn't know there was a life story about him. Is well, there? Or is there? Yeah, he. Um, he he, he, his mother committed suicide in right. 1926, and um, his father abandoned him, and he had to go to El Dorado, Kansas, and he's really a psychologically, you know, and you feel sorry for him, young guy. Oh, by the way, the local's called El Dorado, FYI. Oh, 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 okay, El, El, El Dorado, <laughs> Kansas, yeah. and They insist on mispronouncing it, so don't get uh, in their way. I'm very sorry. But he, about him punching out the high school principal? Yeah, right. You knew all this stuff? I, I didn't know. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he had a troubled adolescence, yeah. And then um, he be, becomes like a lot of those young men in the Depression. He becomes a drifter, and he hops the rails. Right. and Yeah, and then he marries um, Madeline or, or Toot on the night, right. of her, on, night of her senior prom. Yeah, yep. And against the wishes of her father. And then they have the little girl that they name. He names her his name, Stanley. Right. And There's a little narcissism going on there. Well, but, it's, but it's weird. But they, they talk about this guy's life, but then they really roll into um, Stanley Ann, who is Barack Obama's mom, and she wants people to call her Ann. And, right. And by this time, she has been at 17, apparently. This is what Gilbert now believes. She was already posing naked for Frank Marshall Davis. Uh-huh. Uh, do you believe that as well? Uh, I have, um, you know, I am, uh, I, you know, I am of two minds about that, and I, I, I'm looking to be convinced. Although it's the evidence is pretty compelling. And then she, she meets, or they, she claims she meets, a Barack Obama, who she met in this Russian language class, right. who, who never marries her, and he's married to a, he has a wife and two children back in Kenya. Right. So, you know, and it doesn't have anything to anything, but is she having sex with both Frank Marshall Davis and Barack Sr. at the same time? Yeah, I mean, that's the question. And then yeah. the question is, who's who's the actual exactly. father? Which is, yeah. I know Joel Gilbert has explored that in some depth. Yeah. Uh, but then Obama, as a kid, Barry, is abandoned by his Kenyan father. Right. And then the... At this point, if they're married, Barack Sr. is a bigamist, but they're not married. And and then he gets abandoned again by his father. And, right. and he only sees when he only sees Sr., what, in 68? He sees him once. He's about eight years old. Yeah. And he then Sr. dies drunk, right? He dies in a drunk driving wreck, but he's right. wrecked a right. bunch he of had cars. Several yeah. Those right. Before, right. Yeah. And so Anne remarries this Indonesian guy, and in 65, she marries Lola Sotero, and right. they're in Indonesia. And there's people that are writing that, that I never knew. <laughs> Why does this matter? But she hires this transvestite in Indonesia. Have you seen any of this stuff? Yeah, I've seen those pictures. Right? I know her story. Yeah. Oh, Evie. To be the nanny. Right. Yeah, the nanny. And, and yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, Brock was ahead of his time. <laughs> yeah, well, now, in 2012, did you know that Evie shows up again as a broke She's a homosexual hustler at this time. She's a prostitute. She's broke. She's I think someone, uh, someone in straight publication actually did a uh, yeah. New York Times or someone did an article on her. Yeah. Hands. But they say yeah, that, 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 that he's bullied as a kid, and uh, and then she has a baby girl and takes Barry back and dumps Barry on Toot and Gramps, and yeah. again this pain of rejection. There's this there's this interesting psycho history, and at that point Gramps. Almost immediately takes Barry to meet um, the black communist Frank Marshall Davis. Yeah, who's also a pornographer with yeah, a right, taste for, yeah, mind, right, uh, yeah. for pre for pre teen yeah. girls, but so, otherwise. Yeah, why would you take him? Right, why would you take him? And I didn't know he wrote under the name of Bob Green. This is that he and, right his book the yeah. Sex Rebel Black, which Sex is Rebel Black. Pure, That's right, yeah, right, pure pornography. And he talks about a three-way couple of three-way sex sessions under the with his wife and a young girl named Anne. Anne, yeah, right. God, this this stuff is so crazy. He also talks about a three-way with a couple from Seattle, and that's that's her. That's Gramps and Toot. 
Well, right. that's, I mean, presuming that, it's, yeah. that he's telling, you know, yeah. it, it, his Sex Rebel Black is a fictionalized, yeah. um, it's something of a novel, but it's clearly yeah. based on his own experiences. But of all the names to pick, the young white girl whose name is Anne. Yeah, yeah. Wow. No, it's uh, a. Yeah. Great. Uh, great. What is stuff. it? The. Uh, uh, what a tangled web we weave when yeah. first we practice to deceive. And we'll talk again tomorrow when you tie more of this up at uh, the Magical Mystery Tour, right? I, I, I'm stumped at this stuff. I. Of course, I've been stumped at most stuff this morning from reading Robert Gates and you know, but I just right. I just come to your end every once in a while. I go, these people, these are these are absurdists. They're running the show. Yeah, you know. In fact, I would recommend the book to them. I just got halfway through now, and it is the book by the whistleblower in the um, Fast and Furious case. Oh and no, I haven't seen that. You, I haven't seen that. It just came out, and it just it shows you how these people work, and they are utterly, totally indifferent to the truth. I'm, and, point, uh, I'm sorry. I, and that's, that is something that you have to keep in mind when, whenever, mm. you know, they open their mouth or say anything at all. Yeah. I'm going to put, I'm going to put you on hold. You'll talk to Casey and we'll talk tomorrow. Thanks, Jack. Okay. Super. Take uh, care. Thank you. It's Jack Casho. And also we'll talk to Joel Gilbert tomorrow on this, uh, the bot. Nobody wants to listen to a Jack Casho. They don't want to listen to him. You know why? Because I think they break the fantasy bubble or th- it, it takes away from the message. The, Message of Barack Obama. A guy like Jack Cashel, he'll never see Brian Williams in the evening news. It's just not going to happen. A guy like Robert Spencer is never going to be on Meet the Press and talk about, you know, the failures of the Bush administration tied into the failures of the Obama administration. You're not going to hear that. You're not going to see that. Uh, nobody's going to, he's, he's not going to be able to talk. Remember, I remember when I met Robert Spencer, he was being attacked as a racist and I mean, just they would say these horrible things because he was really principally speaking out about Islam. That was like 12 years ago, 13 years ago, when I first met him with Jihad Watch. Uh, Gaz, the same thing. This guy, Alan Kerwin, coming up. I've never spoken to him before. But he says things you're no longer allowed to say. And, of course, the ability of the politically correct. And as I mentioned, if you go back and, you know, George Orwell had it all. And he had it all, he had it all before anybody else had it. But that, that term... Black, white, and you have to read the essays of Orwell and know what Orwell, know Orwell's politics at the time, and the, the and when he was talking about you know he wrote 1984 and 1948 he just flipped the numbers and that's really what he did he was watching the Soviet Union, and as most cases he was watching the Soviet Union in Animal Farm he's watching the Soviet Union he's writing about the Soviet Union, um, the, 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 the snowball the pig is Trotsky I mean you know every, and 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 so you watch this stuff. Black-white is a great word. It has nothing whatsoever to do with the color of one's skin. But the best example I can give you recently in the press of Orwell's term black-white is George Zimmerman, the white Hispanic. Black-white's a word. It's not about skin color. It's not about, you know, night and day. It's black-white. Words, Orwell tells us, mean what Big Brother says they mean. They don't mean what you think they mean. And now we're going to move into this now. Words mean what I say they mean. It's important. Jack Cashel. Now, uh, Jack Cashel is one of those guys that seeks the truth about the the true story of Barack Obama. And he has now broken through into another area, and he has dubbed it, and I think rightfully so, uh, Bar- Barack Obama's Magical Mystery Kenyan Tour. And this stuff about Obama taking advance money from Simon and Schuster and never delivering a book and just running, I'm just a flat out con. And then really the king of swing is, is Joe Gilbert. I thought this is a great way to go out. And Gilbert's come through again too on the dreams of my real father. And I said, well, how about coming on and taking calls? And Gilbert jumps on that with both feet. I love guys like that because they, they want to have conversation about their expertise. I'm Peter Boyles. Without further ado, we go back to this guy. He put one out of the ballpark yesterday. I'm a huge fan of his. Jack Cashel, who is a, a writer, um, a, more of a political investigator, and has just done some of the very best work on the life and times of Barack Obama. Please say good morning, Jack, and welcome back. Good morning, sir. Hey, Peter. Thanks for having me back. Yeah. I mean, I read again last night, I read the entire piece on the magical mystery tour into Kenya. And, you know, I, I, I was talked about it earlier in the 5 o'clock hour here on 710. 
you know, you would think something that's this significant would at least maybe bring the New York Times or the L.A. Times or the Washington Post or someone's attention to the fact that this is yet another scam. If you and I were betting men, how would you bet the attention that's going to be given this? Well, uh, the only people who don't want to disclose the truth are people with something to hide.